Okay, races. I'm going to try and do um, like lessons, different lessons every video I upload. I know there's always so many videos I can make to cover um, different things about racing this specific track, but I'll do my best. Um, anyways, this is members free for two Monday night social. This was Monday just gone. Um, in front of me, uh, in front of me in the pit lane, and just in my distance now, that is Nathan, Team Sports staff. Um, a lot of you who watch my videos know that Nathan features a lot on my channel, mainly because we enjoy just racing when one of us is racing. If I'm racing, Nathan can book on and he'll race with me, just because we actually have nice little races, like, not stressful, just fun little battles. Um, and this was just one of those nights. Uh, anyways, I I pretty much understand straight off off the bat that my car is is slowly creeping on Nathan. So I'm now wondering is my car in a different league, which you do get the anomaly car, or is Nathan's car just um, slacking in a few areas, which turns out to be correct. I believe he had an issue with turning right, so he was having to use more effort, maybe twice the effort to turn right, which was very physically demanding tonight. Um, not a lot of people will know, but the tyre pressures on the front two tyres were, uh, were increased by 4 psi today. Now, they went from 26 psi to 30 psi in the front tyres. All because, yes, this little up ramp here, um, there were some issues where the carts were bottoming out and scraping along the floor, which obviously, over the long run, will cause damage to the carts, chassis, etc. So it was wise, and I, I'm pretty sure Nathan was involved in increasing the tyre pressures along with MJ. If I've got my facts correct there, I think I have. Um, so yeah, Nathan giving the heads up about that before we even started racing tonight. Um, I mentioned it to a few people I was teaching, um, like on and off track, which I'll be honest with you, it was quite um, a nice night actually. Uh, I probably met eight subscribers or people who just watch my videos. Um, they recognise me. They all like say, oh yeah, uh, I watch all your videos, yeah, I, I enjoy all your videos, yeah, thanks for your videos and all that stuff, which is really nice to hear. I mean, the only reason I make these videos is to help uh, less experienced drivers get better faster or get where they want to be in terms of lap times, you know. I hide no secrets. People who know me very well know that I will help someone out the best I can without hiding anything. A lot of people just won't share information like I do. So if you ever feel like you could um, improve and do things better and you just don't know what you're doing wrong or where you could be going better, just come find me, see me. I'm literally there pretty much every Monday. Uh, I watch on Thursdays the members events. If I'm been busy or I'm tired, I'll just watch. I'll come here and have a hot chocolate, have some food and I'll watch, whatever. But yeah, don't be scared, ask me questions. I will do my best to help you, like, the most effective way possible. Every racer has their own racing style. So, what I mean by that is, the racing style kind of comes out to the body style too. So, if you've got someone really tall, and they don't weigh so much it's it's quite it's hard for me to help in that scenario I do my best because I am a lightweight and I'm only like five foot eight and a half so I'm like 174 centimeters or something which is a pretty good height for Formula One even never mind go kind um, and I weigh 64 kg with all my equipment on. Again, 
I'm pretty sure that's the exact same weight as Sebastian Vettel. So apparently I was built for racing go-karts and Formula 1. I've just never made it to Formula 1, clearly. <laughs> Jokes. I never wanted to be there anyway. I do like the sport, but I actually started go-karting when I turned 17. So I got my driving license, and once I got my driver's license, um, I started coming karting quite regularly, and now this is my 8th year driving. I'm 25 uh, in July, and um, this is my 8th year I've been coming to this specific track. So yeah, I've got quite a lot of experience around here. Uh, I mean, there's no hiding that, you know. It is what it is. Um, and yeah, I am doing my best to help anyone who just wants help. I can definitely help people become better than I am, uh, much quicker than I believe I became somewhat good at racing this track, only because I know where my flaws were back in the day and I know how it should be raced now. Uh, I, I, I don't blow my own trumpet, I will say it how it is. If I've done something wrong or I know I can improve somewhere or I've done a specific corner, a turn, whatever, wrongly, I will pick up on it. Um, prime example there, um, it's quite good to me actually, I I oversteered and then I corrected it by twitching my steering wheel and you can see that my car just just sailed through the apex nicely, um, just because my brain's always alert when I'm racing, it's hard to explain but you get used to it. Um, anyways, so the point of this video is, I'm getting a lot of comments lately, um, like Brad, um, I'm getting one minute twos, one minute ones, uh, one minutes, I just can't get into the 59s, and I would say the main reason people are stuck in them sort of times is just because they're not using the tyre walls um, to the best of their capabilities. So what I mean by this is, so let's start the fresh lap. Here's my fresh lap, yeah. So I touched that apex, yeah? And I'm a few inches off that apex. A few inches off that one. Great. A few inches off that tyre wall. A few inches off that tyre wall. A few inches off that tyre wall. Now, let's say there's 15 major corners. That being one, this being one, underneath this bridge, and then the rest. Every sudden turn is a major corner, what I would call it, like this for example. Now, if you was getting a few inches away from 15 of the major tyre walls, let's say 4 inches max. Let's time, so 15 by 4, yeah? So that's 60, 60 inches. Now, if you spread 60 inches, like, in your arms, for example, I mean, I'm not sure how tall I am in inches, I don't uh, measure myself in height by that way, but it's not that much. Now, if you used to think of it this way, if I was to miss all these apexes by a good foot, foot and a half, two foot even, because I do see it, and people who are, who, who are going slower than one minute one, they are definitely uh, not hitting the apexes as efficiently as they can be. So, you got 60 inches if you hit every apex flush or if you're missing it by a good foot and a half to foot let's times 15 let's just times 15 by a foot so that's 15 foot yeah 15 foot is quite some distance if you used to count it in the time world of racing motorsports compare 15 foot in distance to 60 inch uh, 60 inches in distance big difference yeah probably a good half a second, but like, a foot's being generous, I've seen people missing apexes by two foot, so what if we say they've missed it by two foot, well that's 15, that's 15 times two foot, and that's only the major corners, I'm not even including um, hugging tyre walls at this point, so now we're talking 30 foot, there's 30 foot of track distance that you have made, so you have kind of made the track longer than it needs to be and that 
the time for that distance obviously it's just going to going to like um, increase your lap times it's not going to decrease your lap times it's going to increase them which is why it is really important if you could do what I'm doing and that's hugging tire walls like this is the perfect example I hug that one I move to this one and then I hug this one I hug that one I move straight over into my braking line I go across to this tire wall kind of and now I snoop in I hit this apex push this one I clip a tiny bit doesn't matter I clip these ones sometimes but you can see how close my my um, frame is on the go-kart it all adds up like I mean in this in this case it minimizes your lap times yeah uh, just just sit here just sit here and I'll just watch how close I am to every tire wall this is the key lesson to this video because if you can just marginally clip the tire walls instead of going too wide or whatever you're going to see some you're going to see your your best lap time drop so like massively i think the key part to getting 59s is doing this if you're not doing what i'm doing right now you're not getting 59s i'm sorry but i'll just be putting about it that is the primary reason you are not getting 59s so take this as, as like a major lesson always do your best to decrease the distance of the lap so the, the track I should say uh, this track measures what a thousand meters and I'm pretty sure it measures a thousand meet a thousand meters if you do the long way around the tire walls around every corner so let's say if we do all the inner tire walls then you probably shorten the track a cons considerable like, amount um, compared to racing the long way around which some people do novice racers just use uh, too little of the track I use all the track but I use it in a way which makes me faster and not slower if that makes sense I know that doesn't make sense but I go from one tyre wall to another tyre wall all because I'm looking at how can I go faster once I turn through this corner how can I go faster into the next corner how can I get a better angle like this I, let, I lift so I go wide here and I can come narrow and I can come narrow again kind of I vary a bit there I come really narrow or I go wider all depends on my car's grip um, anyways I'm pretty sure I probably come in this lap um, but I've explained my theory behind racing. This this is racing in general. Every Formula One driver will tell you the same. Anyone who knows anything about motorsports will tell you the same. Uh, so yeah, I come to the pit lane here, and I'm pretty sure Nathan follows me. But that is the major lesson I wanted to teach here. Do your best to shorten the track. Don't make the track longer than it should be.